Hey friends, welcome back to Homestead by the Highway. My name is Carrie, and today is kitchen day. One of the things I'm gonna do is preserve up these lemons. I just got these in an Azure haul that is in another video, but these are organic lemons um, from Azure. It's two pounds of them, but I'm gonna get them into the dehydrator. Some of them, a couple of them, I'm gonna try to put in water and store in the fridge and people say you can get a couple months out of them that way so I'm going to give that a whirl but these other ones I'm going to get into slices and get them into the dehydrator I'm also going to get my other dehydrator going with garlic surprise surprise and then we are going to cook up some bacon make some salsa and lots of things on the agenda today so I just thought I would bring you along and share with you what I was doing All right, so I just went looking for my hand mandolin and I think I got rid of it because I got this uh, chopper and I thought, I don't know if I can do lemons on this. I have like julienned carrots and potatoes and that kind of stuff, but I am going to give this a whirl. Um, this is the Pampered Chef version of this machine. And I'm just gonna cut the end off, which I don't really have to do, I'm sure. I'm gonna drop this in. I do not sell this. I do not have any affiliation with them. It's just the machine that I am using. And I don't know if you're gonna be able to see anything. And I have it, I'm gonna slice it a little thinner to slice these. And I will bring you in so that you can actually see it. You can see that they are shooting. It does have a container that you can put them in, um, but I was just doing them on my cutting board first, so I was just going to do that. We're gonna throw another little chunk in there. This is way easier than using a knife. And we have one whole tray of lemons in just a matter of minutes. All right, so I'm just laying my lemons out on my dehydrator trays. I hope these aren't too thick. These might take a really long time because some of them are pretty thick. Give that one another go.
and these are organic lemons. I'm just going to throw these ends on here and let them dehydrate as well in case I can crush them or zest them or something like that. I didn't really look into it that well. But the dehydrator is going to be going anyways. There's plenty of room on the tray. They might as well go on. All right, so I have a very simple um, Excalibur is the name of my dehydrator. I do have another dehydrator that I also use and I'll be using that for garlic and I will be putting that out in the garage later. But right now my Excalibur is going to be doing these lemons. I found this at a thrift, sh thrift shop and I want to say it was $30, maybe $40. Uh, it does not have an on off button. It only has you plug it in and it starts. It does have the temperature gauge on it so I can set that. It is a four tray so it is the smaller version of the Excalibur and this front lid just lifts up and the trays just slide in. And I do like this one. It is small enough to fit on my countertop. The kitchen is not going to get all stinky and covered with garlic scent so I will let the onions go and they will smell amazing. Lid on and we are going to turn it up to, this is says 135 for fruit. Let me see if I, 135 for the fruit setting and it um I will let it start at that and we'll go from there and then we're just gonna plug it in and it's going to start running all right friends we're back again and next up we are doing bacon I we bought these uh, they were on sale. We thought we'd give them a try. These are Hormel Black Label. We like a thick cut bacon. So we bought an original, a pecan, and a cherry wood. I think they were like $8.50 a package. And all the packages are a pound and a half. So depending upon what bacon prices are, where you are, that's what they are here. I do have I was giggling because as I was bringing these up, these have like zipper top packaging on them. And I'm like, mm, if I'm gonna fry up bacon, I do it all at once. And I actually do it in my oven. So I got out my biggest cookie sheet, which fits the entire shelf of my oven. And I got this at our local store. It is made in the USA uh, pan. And it's got like little grooves in it. I don't know if you can see those. Um, but I bake cookies and everything on it and it works great. Uh, the grooves don't make a difference to anything uh, in my opinion. But it is Nordic wear is what it says on it. It's got a picture of like a Viking on it. But it was made in the USA and I think it was 75 cents more than the big brand name pan company known in their cake decorating uh, stuff. It was 75 cents more than that pan and those are not made in the USA. And I do as often as I can try to buy made in the USA stuff. If you are viewing it, viewing this channel and you're not in the USA, I encourage you to also choose to buy things where you are from. But I love this pan. So we're gonna do the original on this and my hands were washed and everything's clean I've got the oven set at 400 and I'm just going to throw these in there I'm going to use a little bit of the grease from this in a pan I have a sweet potato that is starting to sprout 
and I got a whole bunch of potatoes from Azure and I'm going to chop those up and fry them up in a little bacon grease and throw some rosemary in it and then tomorrow we will fry up a couple eggs and reheat those potatoes and have that for breakfast so well the one thing I like about this pan already is if bacon is thick cut you would really think that I could get a pound on a pan. I just got a pound and a half with a little bit of room and that never happens. I always have like two extra pieces that don't fit in on the pan. It makes me just, that's where an OCD thing, some things don't affect me, but when all the bacon doesn't fit on the pan, it drives me crazy. So we are going to get this washed or get my hands washed up. I'm gonna throw this in the oven uh, on 400, probably about 15 minutes and then we'll pull it out and then we'll swap. I'm gonna keep these in the fridge so they stay nice and cold and we'll do each batch um, while we're doing our kitchen stuff. All right, friends, welcome back for a hot minute. Pulling our bacon out, the ends of my oven cook faster than the rest of the oven, so I always have to pull this out and pull off the end pieces and then put the rest of it back in. So pull those guys off, throw them on there. And then all this will go back in the oven to cook a little longer. last batch of bacon this is the cherry wood flavored bacon that we had and the funniest thing I splatter myself with grease if I don't put an apron on but I ran really quick my mom lives about a mile from me and she said she had tomatoes that needed to be used up and I'm gonna make some salsa so I said oh great I'll come and get them but I got into the car and I'm driving to her house and all I did not, I smell like bacon. I got to her house and she goes, oh, are you cooking bacon? And I'm like, as a matter of fact, I am. And I just threw grease everywhere. That's why I went put the apron on. And I smell like bacon. So we are going to get this all set. And then 
And this is how uneven my stove cooks. So you see these pieces here, which you can't see really close and I can't grab you. But then, on the ends, I have these pieces. So those are the difference in those. Let's see if I can't get you a shot of those. So these are like really well done and these are like barely done. But when we reheat them, they finish cooking, so I don't worry about that. So, three packs of bacon at a pound and a half piece, all cooked up today. Lemons are in the dehydrator. I've got to start the garlic as well as the salsa. So we'll be back. All right, friends, we're back and I am going to get salsa started. And I wish I was better at multitasking and having more than two things going on in the kitchen at once. And I had a little bit of a headache that I was fighting. So it was one task at a time. So we're gonna mush this all together though and look, make it look like I did it all at the same time. I hope. Anyways, we're going to do salsa and I've never made salsa before. I've never canned it. And so I'm just taking a recipe from somebody else that I'm going to try and we're going to go from there. I do have to clean off my bacon pan and now that that is cooled so that I can put the, I'm going to put the tomatoes and onions on that and I'm going to roast them. And while I'm doing that, I am going to multitask and I'm going to shred and chop up zucchini to make mock pineapple as well as just put some shredded zucchini into the freezer. So that's what we're coming up on next. And yes, I do use soap. I just opted to rinse most of this out before I actually put soap on it. So I didn't lose all my soap down the drain because I'm not going to draw a whole full sink. So yes, I use soap. So that looks like a brand new pan with just a couple of minutes of scrubbing it up. Right now I'm just taking off the green stems and yes, I'm even using my cherry tomatoes, my paste tomatoes. I'm just using whatever tomatoes I have available to me. My mom gave me some round ones that are a few of these might not be quite ready. We're going to core these. Oh, the fat one I can't even pull out. on the cutting board and grab the next batch. Okay, so with my regular round tomatoes, all I'm doing is taking my little core doodad, cutting out the top, and cutting them in half, and then I'm laying them cut side down on a pan. So we're gonna do that for all of those. The longer ones, like the paste tomatoes, those I am not doing that with as much. If I see any bad spots, I'm cutting those out as well. These ones here, 
just doing that because these ones I'm actually doing a longer V cut and getting that stem out of there. We're going to get them all cut side down on the pan and then get them into the oven with some onions and let them roast. Okay, we had to do a shift with the camera because the window is now really bright and I have all the tomatoes onto the pan. This is probably way more so I might have to divide it into a second pan because I also need to add on the peppers, the onions, and the garlic. I did not read the recipe very closely. That's what I do sometimes. Um, we are not hot and spicy people. My husband does things like th things spicier than I do. Uh, so it was eight to ten hot peppers. I bought one because that's going to work for me. And um, I bought some green peppers. So uh, these are not my green peppers. Actually, I was gifted some green peppers. So not my green peppers, but I'm going to throw some green peppers in. I'm going to throw the jalapeno in, and then we're going to peel up. It says 10 to 13 cloves of garlic. Mm, I have about 17 because that's what I do. So we'll get those peeled up too. So I wanted to just mention for a minute, I did make that funny remark about I didn't read the recipe really well. If you are canning, there are a lot of rules that you need to follow for safety reasons. Um, there are rebel canners out there that do a lot of things. There are people who only water bath can stuff and I see the safety and value in that as well as there are countries that don't have pressure canners that are canning stuff. That being said, uh, there are things that you do need to follow. How many hot peppers I have in there? I'm going to make up for in green peppers, so it's kind of a trade-off. So my recipe is going to, for the most part, stay the same. It's just going to be a different pepper uh, in that respect. So when I say that, please don't go, oh my gosh, we can't watch her. She's not canning safely. She didn't read the recipe. I'm just swapping out peppers. The other steps that I follow to preserve it will remain uh, the same and safe. And. And I could skip these green peppers altogether, but I did not want to waste them and they are, we will not get them eaten before they are ready. So we will get them in here and we will use them and it'll be okay. I need to cut onions, but I'm putting that off till last. So we're gonna do my favorite part. And I'm just gonna take this and dry this off a little bit. and it's peeled garlic some people put it in a bowl and I did a sample of that in one of my garlic videos and they shake it with a lid on it and it peels it for them that has never worked for me uh, so I have one of these and I also have one that's green and shaped like a garlic but I just toss them in here just a couple cloves at a time and roll them and cut them. This is my garlic that I have grown. And so we're going to get these and then I'm going to cut off the ends really quick and then toss them all onto the onto the tray. All right, so I got a whole pan of onions, peppers, cloves of garlic. I have one last thing to do, and this is the jalapeno. And yes, I only got one jalapeno. It'll be okay, I promise. Um, I'm gonna leave some of the seeds in it and stuff like that. Um, and that's why I'm confident that one is probably gonna be enough for us. But I would love for you to take a moment and pause this and leave a comment down below. 
I think I've overfilled my pan. I'm really thinking that I'm going to have a wet, hot mess. I've never broiled vegetables, or I mean, I guess I'm baking them at 350 for 40 minutes. How much juice this is going to create. And so, please take a moment and vote down below at my expense. Is this going to overflow? I don't know. Um, I hope not. This cookie sheet fits the entire bottom of my pan or of my oven. So we will see and I will keep you updated on that. So we're just going to cut this one jalapeno. It says to just cut it and half it. So I'm going to half it and I'm going to remove this big section of uh, center and seeds and we'll leave this wimpy amount uh, in there to heat it up. I only got one glove. Maybe this would work, but I think I'm just going to shoot jalapeno juice everywhere. trying to be careful doing that because I only put one glove on and probably should have done two. I don't want to regret that later. This is to have it and I'm just going to leave that one right there. We're going to put those in the center and we're going to get this into the oven. I really thought I was going to lift this tray with one hand and hold the camera with the other. And this tray what, probably weighs 12 pounds. Into the oven for 40 minutes. All right, friends, welcome back. And no, we did not overflow the pan with juice, which I am totally surprised. There is some juice on there, not as much as what I thought after cooking it for an hour, but that's all right. We're gonna get you set up and I am going to use a slotted spoon and scoop this stuff into the food processor, process it up to the thickness that I like, and then dump it into the big bowl. I am going to remove part of my tomato skins. I'm not going to remove them all. A lot of people cook some with them on, some don't. And I am going to remove uh, a good portion of my tomato skins. I've never done salsa and canning before, so I don't really know which way I like it. Ooh. Not my best move. I don't know if you saw that. I just sent juice flying everywhere. Alright, so. I have my garbage bowl that's going to go out. Not the glove. But I'll just pitch these into here. I normally take this stuff out and throw it in my compost. But where I started my compost, I was all excited, and it is now covered in poison ivy. So this won't be going to the compost, but just out to the wood line, and the little critters can eat what they choose. All right, let's scoop some of these up. I've also never done hot food in my food processor before. So I'm not going to overfill it. Hopefully I haven't yet.
brightest move. All right, so we're gonna fill this up again. Like I said before, I'm taking off some of the tomato skins. I've read that the tomato skins can make it bitter. Some people will save the tomato skins and put them in their dehydrators and turn them into powder. I have plenty of tomato powder at this point in time to where that's not going to be a priority for me. Um, to save every last bit. Um, someday I may regret that, but for today I'm going to do what what you can do today. And you can only do what you can do. One is you should enjoy what you're doing and not be stressed. And I do stress sometimes, as do we all, especially as things really start coming into season. But I truly enjoy and love the fact that I am canning food. I'm canning food that I grew. I'm canning food that other people grew that what they grew too much. They were they were blessed with a bounty, and I am able to use it and take advantage of it. And I thank them for that. that I am going to do the onions and the peppers because I would like it to be a little chunkier and these ones are not chunking up at the same consistency as the tomatoes. So I'm going to throw this stuff in here and chunk these. These garlic cloves, yummy. These are all gonna get zipped through here again. So I may be even doing it too long because we're going to uh, add in the cilantro and stuff. Removing the skins is totally personal preference, and I know a ton of people that go, I don't even take the time to do it, but you see how easy they come off when they're roasted, so I'm going to remove half of them. That's probably good, because all the cherry tomatoes, I'm not taking those off for obvious reasons. And some people will probably be having anxiety. Yes, I am just going to strain this into my sink. I am not going to save this. There's probably a great use for it. I don't know what that is yet. And some days you can do it all and some days you can't. All right, so real quick, I am going to core these tomatoes that I'm not going to use today and I do want to put enough tomatoes into the freezer so that I can try to make pizza sauce all right friends so we got this all mixed up and I ended up I used that one jalapeno and it didn't have enough spice even for me so I added two 
Hungarian yellow wax peppers that I had in my freezer from last gardening season and that bumped it up to a whole new level. So this is good to go. I'm going to get it in the canner. I'm not going to bring you along for that process. I have other canning videos. I can walk you through it kind of once I get it out of the canner. I'm going to load hot liquid into hot jars, put it in a hot canner, and I'm going to water bath this. Uh, with this recipe, I did use vinegar, it has lemon juice, it has the tomatoes, so I am confident that it is fine to water bath. So I'm going to water bath it. The extra tomatoes that I did not use today, those I went ahead and cored and I scored the bottom. I put an X on the bottom. These are all going to go in the freezer and I am going to turn these into, I hope, pizza sauce. Might be spaghetti sauce, but probably more likely going to be pizza sauce. So I'm just going to start putting them in there until I have enough to do another batch. And that makes them really easy to skin if you haven't done that. Do the skins peel right off? So these are going down into the freezers. These I'm going to get jarred up and I will bring you back once they come out of the canner. Okay, so it is the next morning and I did the salsa up last night. We ended up running into town and I did it and it is all, everybody is sealed. So they are all good. I only did eight uh, pints of it. I've never done salsa for us before, so I don't know if we're going to like it or not. I'm a really picky chip eater. It's not about the salsa. Well, I am a picky salsa person too, but it is more about I, I've got to have a good chip and I don't like to just sit and eat chips um, but if I'm gonna I'm gonna put a good sauce on it so these look great and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take off all the rings give everybody the lift test really quick I do not store my jars with the lids on are the the rings on I don't store them with the rings on I do leave them off I want to know if they pop off it is very controversial as to some people do it one way some people do it another I have no issue taking my rings off I wash them up really good and just throw them into a Rubbermaid tote um, not an issue at all so I will get these all labeled and down into uh, the cupboard with the rest of the canned goods the other thing that we did yesterday is in my dehydrator, I unplugged this this morning, it's been cooling, and I know some of these are overdone, if you can overdo them, but these are the lemon slices. So, uh, I will put these all into a jar. I've never had to turn my dehydrator up that high. I did for these lemons and I think it was too much. I've dehydrated, dehydrated a lot of things in there, but these are so pretty. So I'm going to let them sit a little longer. I'm going to see they're still a little tacky. So I don't know if lemons do that or not. Ooh, that one. Yeah. Some of these need to go a little longer yet. So I'll have to plug that back in, but that's where the lemons are. And I'm just going to put them into a jar with a lid on it. And this morning I also got up and I did uh, cleaned and shredded 54-ish cups of squash to go into the freezer. That was actually a, I was doing that to help somebody out, so I did that for them. So that is all in my freezer right now and I'm going to get that to her later. And so I did that already this morning too. I fried up. A sweet potato with a regular potato in bacon grease from the bacon we made yesterday that was yummy for breakfast anyways thanks friends thanks for coming along with me for my kitchen day have an awesome day a weekend a week probably we'll get this on a Sunday so have me the rest of your week be blessed and I will see you soon thanks for hanging out be sure if you learned something to like below if you have questions throw that in as well and we will see you soon Thanks, friends. Bye.